Tonight on Hotty Toddy News, we're bringing you wellness stories from one of the most underdeveloped areas in the country, the Mississippi Delta. In Greenwood, Mississippi, an outreach program helps people with poor medical insurance. How one pastor is feeding thousands of people each month with his food pantry. And how a new smoothie bar is giving people much needed access to fresh produce. Hotty Toddy News starts now. Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of Hotty Toddy News. I'm Justin Class. Today we're taking a deep dive into the health divide in our state, especially in the Mississippi Delta. Many Mississippians have a difficult time paying for life-saving health care like cancer treatments. The Cancer Center at Greenwood Hospital is taking steps to make sure lives aren't lost because they can't pay for the right care. LaTanya Dodd, chief executive officer at a community center in Greenwood, Mississippi, was 35 years old when she was diagnosed with stage 2B breast cancer. Dodd had just gotten a mammogram previously in October of 2020. They see nothing. In July 2020, Dodd had found a lump in the nipple of her breast. Like, wow, like, I just did a mammogram. The recommendation is to start getting mammograms at age 40 yearly, but Dodd started early because of her history of benign lumps found in her breasts. Samantha Milton had a history of breast cancer in her family, but when she had itchiness in her breasts and pain, like any concerned woman, she Googled her symptoms. Said it could be allergies, too much caffeine. So I just said, well, yeah, that's probably me because I'm the guy that has three Cokes and a smile a day. But later when she performed a self-breast exam, she felt a knot in her breast. In my mind, like I said, I don't know if it was intuition, if it was God or whatever. I knew that it was cancer. I just knew it just it's like it just came all over me, and I knew, so I knew I had to act fast. Black women in Mississippi to have a 60% greater chance of having a poor outcome from breast cancer than white women for a number of reasons. A higher level of poverty is one factor. Having enough gas to drive to your appointment is a barrier of access to care. Greenwood LaFleur Hospital created its Survive to Thrive program in an attempt to tackle these barriers to make patients' access to care a little easier. The hospital's cancer center team says they first sought funding to improve outcomes for lung cancer, another major health problem in the Delta region. Center director Wilson Gillard said one simple purchase made a huge difference. Take some of our funding and go down to Jackson by a van and hire a driver. Um, and, and there the program took off. The breast cancer program is much newer, but Dr. Givens says some of the same challenges exist for getting people into treatment. We don't know what's out there. It's not being seen, but we know there's a lot out there that's not being seen. So it's one of those things, how do we get the fish or what's the bait to bring them in? Everybody's attention please. This is Samantha Milton and she just finished her treatment. <laughs> Luckily for Dodd and Milton, their cancer was caught early enough to give them a better outcome. In January I had a PET scan done and in February they diagnosed me cancer free, February the 4th. The Survive to Thrive program is already having an impact on those with breast cancer in the Delta, and the hospital team has plans to take on patients with other cancers soon, helping them along the path to treatment and survival. Lily Garner, University of Mississippi for the Gray News Network. Thanks, Lily. While access to affordable care is a major issue in the Delta, food insecurity poses just as big of a threat. A Delta pastor is taking it upon himself to make sure that people in his community can get their next meal. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Husband, father, preacher, and teacher are some of the titles Joe Young holds. How is Lana this morning? He is a pastor at Fifth Baptist Church in Charleston, Mississippi, located in Tallahatchie County, one of the poorest areas in the state where he spent his whole life. People who came to the pantries often were the, the poorest of the poor. It's Saturday morning. A long line of cars are lined up in front of the food pantry, Young Runs, and Parchment, about an hour away from his church. He and his team of volunteers are getting ready to distribute food collected from local donations and organizations such as Feeding America. Residents in need drive by the pantry to collect food packed in boxes. The Mississippi Delta is a food desert. There's little access to produce, and it is also one of the most food insecure regions in the nation, 
where one out of five people do not know where their next meal will come from. We probably were the first people to convert to a drive through food pantry. He says before the pandemic, they were feeding a few hundred people once a month. Now that number is much higher. I'm in Charleston, Mississippi at one of three pantry locations in the area. This is where Joe Young comes with his volunteers to help serve the community. They can serve up to 2,300 people in a month. Now, as you can see behind me, they're in a hybrid location that's actually a drive-through due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, before the pandemic, we were serving a few hundred. Uh, at Christmas time, uh, we might serve six or seven hundred. Yeah. And uh, Tommy now, was uh, 1,500, 2,000 a month um, between all of our food in the county are would be more than normal. Once he got his volunteers organized in Parchman, he packed the van to deliver food to those who cannot make it to the pantry. Then her dad had COVID in the hospital. He did survive, but uh, we have brought something every month. He delivers food, but also checks on the community to make sure they are doing well. You take care. He relies a lot on volunteers who admire and love his work. Tallahatchie County is a lot of people are in need of food right now. And they know, they've learned that this is the place they can come to get it. And it's always available whenever they need it. Ray says Young is the glue that keeps everything together. Just can't say enough about while the job is rewarding, Young says it is not an easy task to feed that many people. Just, it takes so much time and energy. Uh, there's something to do every day. You know. uh, now I've got people trained to do things, but in the beginning I'd wake up at night and I'd think, I forgot to check the temperature in those deep freezes. And... Uh, now, I don't even do that anymore unless I just happen to be there. But he says he would not have it any other way. <laughs> Through all he does, Young believes faith and food are what bring people together. We have been and why what he does in the Delta is so important? Uh, there's something about sharing food that I guess God knows that it brings us together. After four years. And so... Uh, I think it's been it's been something to bring us together. Grace and Gordon, University of Mississippi for Gray News Network. Thanks, Grayson. Joe Young feeds thousands in the Mississippi Delta, but because they have such little access to produce, he can only give non-perishables and frozen foods. Just down the road from Charleston, one new business in Greenville is finding ways to make fresh produce and other healthy foods more accessible to people who struggle to find them. Fried catfish, one of the most popular dishes at Catfish Cabin, a restaurant located in Cleveland, Mississippi. Best catfish in the Delta. This is the Mississippi Delta, a region rich in tradition, where fast food reigns supreme and restaurants use recipes that often call for deep frying and lots of butter. Things that have the chicken liver, hamburger steak, and fried chicken steak. I call it Three Meat Wednesdays. While this type of food is delicious, it is not always good for health and could cause obesity and other cardiovascular diseases. But healthy food is not always available in the region, which dietitian Mariana Jers calls a food desert. I think a huge part of it is also not having access. So you can tell people night and day to eat a certain way, but if they don't have access to these foods, how can they improve? their eating habits, right? And although there is a bunch of unhealthy places to eat in the Delta, Kay's cute fruit is paving the way for some change. I'm so glad to see everybody. This new smoothie bar in Greenville, Mississippi just opened in April and is one of the first of its kind in the region. On the menu, customers can find fruit blends, breakfast fruit bowls, and freshly squeezed juices. Owners Kanisha and Jason Lewis say their ultimate goal is to get people in the Delta thinking preventively about their health. It is a big thing to us because we want people to know about health. We want them to know that you can get something delicious, super cute, mm -hmm. and you know, be healthy with it. The opening of Kay's Cute Fruit was greeted with enthusiasm from many Greenville residents. My husband just said that this is going to be his new morning spot. 
And the director of Main Street programs in downtown Greenville, Gretchen Jacelli, says Kay's Cute Fruit is going to have a huge impact on the county. Someone may not want to actually taste just a fruit itself, having it broken down into a smoothie. That may be something um, that they can combine different fruits that they're not used to eating together. It's going to have a huge impact with a healthy lifestyle, healthy eating, not just for adults, but also for small children as well. The owners of Kay's Cute Fruit say their hope is to inspire young people to get used to eating fruit and vegetables from an early age and live a healthier life. Madeline Nolan, University of Mississippi for Gray News Network. Thanks, Maddie. Kay's Cute Fruit is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They are closed on Sundays. After more than three years as a food desert, Quitman County, which lies about 20 miles south of Batesville, finally has a place for its residents to get groceries. AJ Norwood went to the new store in Marks to understand how it has changed things in the community. It's been at least three years since Marks, Mississippi saw its last grocery store, making the small town a food desert. But just recently, the town added Jeff Coates Family Market to its community. County resident Jerry Roy says the new store is making a big difference for the people living there. Oh, it, it, it makes a lot of difference. You couldn't buy anything in town here until the lay back up. The owner of Jeff Coates Family Market was approached last year about opening a store in Marks in addition to their Tunica store. But store manager Debbie Hearn says those plans were put to a halt. We were intending to open last November and COVID kept us from opening until March the 20th. Normally, residents of Marks, Mississippi would have to travel about 20 minutes down the road to grocery stores like the Save-A-Lot located here in Batesville, Mississippi. But with the new market in town, those trips just got a whole lot shorter. Well, brought a lot of uh, hurt and pain away from people. Old people had to travel, young people had to travel 20 miles one way, 16 miles the other way just to buy, you know, their groceries. And for those who live farther out. And when you're just grabbing something to cook for supper at night, it's a lot easier than having to drive 30, 40 miles. Jeff Coates Family Market sits in the same building as the community's last grocery store along Highway 3 just south of Gitwell Street. They are open from 8 to 8 Monday through Saturday and 8 to 7 on Sundays. A.J. Norwood, University of Mississippi for Gray News Network. That's all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to a special health edition of Hottie Toddy News. I'm Justin Class. Thank you and good night.